Michael McDowell is leaving Front Row Motorsport at the end of the year, and the Cup Series might be headed to Bowman Gray Stadium. Welcome back to Break Hard. My name is Matt, and we have big news to start off our Wednesday. It was announced that Michael McDowell would be leaving Front Row Motorsport, the team he's been with for the last seven years, won the 2021 Daytona 500 with. He won the Indianapolis Road Course last year, beating Hendrick Motorsports and Chase Elliott straight up on speed. A real David versus Goliath story, for being completely honest here. And now, less than, like literally months after Front Row Motorsports announced they are now a Tier 1 Ford team, Michael McDowell is bidding adieu to the team. And instead, he will be heading to Spire Motorsport in 2025 on a multi-year deal, replacing Zane Smith in that number 71 car. And I know a lot of you are like, that's a pretty mid move. Like, it's a lot like going from the Brewers to the Cubs. You're not really gaining anything here. You're just kind of moving from team to team with a different color. And you're not wrong. Front Row Motorsport is a Tier 1 four team, but you're not going to just become a powerhouse overnight. And McDowell has done a really good job building that team to where it's at, but now he's going to move on. And going to Spire, while it might seem like a lateral move, does make some sense. Spire, of course, has been known to, to pay. They're willing to open up the pocketbook. And maybe, we don't actually know this, but maybe Michael McDowell wanted to be paid what he thought his market value was after potentially being underpaid at Front Row. That's why he went to Spire. Could be. I'll never fault a guy for going out there and getting paid. At the same time, there's some things in play behind the scenes at Spire. We, of course, continue to hear the Andretti rumors that they'll buy into Spire at some point. And if they do, there's an influx of cash right there. There's also the idea that if Honda does come into the sport, then that would become the factory Honda team, especially if Andretti joins the team as a you know co-owner or complete owner at that point because of their relationship with Honda on the IndyCar side. They, of course, have a strong relationship over there. So if there is going to be a factory Honda team, Spire seems to be the team kind of set up in the perfect spot for that. But for now, they'll continue to be be kind of a tier one or tier two Chevy team. My apologies, because we all know it goes Hendrick Motorsports and then uh, half a step down is probably Trackhouse. And then another step below that is probably RCR all within that like tier one, one and a half scale. And then there's kind of Spire underneath that. They do have a good relationship with Hendrick Motorsports. So maybe Michael McDowell is banking on that. Guess it kind of remains to be seen what he's going to do. But he does become the veteran presence over at Spire. And maybe that's what they're paying for. Because right now, Carson Hosevar has done a really good job starting off the season. Corey LaJoy continues to not have any top 10 finishes at a non-drafting track. And Zane Smith is 12 races into his cup career and constantly has people out here calling for his job like he's Alex Bowman. Except Bowman actually has wins. For Zane Smith, though, I know some people are probably going to celebrate this. And they're going to be like, oh, good. Spire's moving on from Zane. He's not been good in the first 12 races. Since when have we started judging people off the first 12 races of their NASCAR Cup Series career? That makes absolutely no sense to me. I mean, it took Chase Elliott and Kyle Larson nearly 100 races to win, and nobody's out here going, those guys should lose their ride. 12 races into a season with a team that just added a third car, that being Zane Smith's number 71, there's a lot of growing pains happening over there. So for them to not come out of the gate super hot, not exactly a shock to anybody out there with what's going to happen with Zane Smith. He's not losing his ride. He's on loan to Spire from track house this year. Track house is going to be in the market for a third charter. Of course, they're not buying one until a charter agreement comes into place. But once that does happen, you can fully expect track house to be buying a third charter and Zane Smith being in house at track house next year, driving one of their cars, whatever the number of that is. Maybe he drives a 99 car. Maybe he drives whatever the next number is that they're going to add to the stable. But that's where he's going next year. So for McDowell, he's moving on from front row to Spire. And now all the other dominoes are going to start to fall into place here after this McDowell move. Because there's a lot of things happening behind the scenes. And I know everybody's like, oh, this was the hyped up move that NASCAR media was talking about. Listen, some of the things that have flown around in boxes are actually ridiculous, if we're being completely honest. So will all of them happen? Absolutely not. But there's some big things that will happen. And I think everybody kind of knows what the biggest one at the moment is with Front Row Motorsports. So have to wait and see for all that to be official. But Mike McDowell is moving on from Front Row to Spire in 2025. Another thing that could be happening in the very near future is the NASCAR Cup Series racing at Bowman Gray Stadium. So when NASCAR took over operations of Bowman Gray Stadium earlier this year, everybody was immediately like, take the Cup Series to the Madhouse. And if you're not familiar with Bowman Gray, I just went two weeks ago. 
it was everything that I wanted it to be. So some people have watched the Madhouse series that uh, was on History Channel, I believe, back in the day. I was, uh, you know, I, th I think in my teens back then when, when that aired. And it was phenomenal. It made Bowman Gray Stadium seem like it was this incredible place. Bowman Gray has, of course, at times devolved into a WWE demolition derby type of event. And I think a lot of us don't really love that aspect of it. Bowman Gray is about hard-nosed racing. You're going to have to move a guy to usually get position on him unless you get a heck of a run off the corner or have traction control. Either way, Bowman Gray does have a legendary spot in the NASCAR lore. It's been around for a very long time. And there's been 29 NASCAR Cup Series races at the famed quarter-mile track in Winston-Salem, and the 30th edition might just be around the corner. So Sunday night during the NASCAR Cup Series broadcast, they did their thing where they talked to the different crew members, where they introduced you know, a different crew member uh, um, pit crew during the race. And this week, after one of the pit crew members got done speaking, he said that he went to Winston-Salem State University. That's where he played football at. And Mike Joy on the broadcast said Winston-Salem State University. We might be racing at your stadium soon, that being Bowman Gray. So there's a lot of talk about the NASCAR Cup Series taking the clash to Bowman Gray Stadium, going all the way out to the LA Coliseum. While great, while market, while it is a market that NASCAR wants to be in, was very costly for the teams. All of them lost money on that trip. And I think the course has kind of, you know, it's the race has kind of run its course. Not the course has run its course. That would make no sense. But the race has run its course out there. And the biblical flooding and moving it up to Saturday certainly didn't help. Having this race just kind of be in NASCAR's backyard, though, what, an hour, hour plus maybe from Charlotte, if that, uh, in Winston-Salem would be a great spot to have it. The biggest problem is the weather in Winston-Salem. It's not like it's the beach. It's not Southern California. It's not even, you know, South Carolina. Winston-Salem can get kind of chilly and potentially get some snow during that period, that early February window when they run the clash. So it'll be interesting to see if they can do that. Bowman Gray Stadium holds, what, sixteen to 17,000 people. There's really no place to expand to it. And having just been there, I was actually amazed and not surprised, but like in the best way possible, how well run that whole operation is. The parking was super easy to get into. When you're ready to cross the road, the police officer stops it for you. There's no like having to you know go to a crosswalk, wait for the light to change, or just play Frogger and hope that you don't get clapped out by a Honda Accord. But it was really well done. Then you get into the stadium. They have all the concessions you could possibly want. Great permanent built concession stands on the east and west side of the stadium. The bathrooms were phenomenal. All the facilities were great for that crowd. For that size crowd, it was all perfect. So I wouldn't want to add seats to the stadium. I think this has to be one of those events where you're like, yeah, this is what it is. This is grassroots racing. And honestly, I'd love to see the clash move around to different short tracks. Yeah, it's difficult to do in early February, but it's something that I think the NASCAR all-star race should do as well. Move around to different short tracks around the country each year and try to highlight the sport and get back to connecting with grassroots racers, as well as also continuing to try to access those markets that you desperately want to be in. Chicago, LA, Dallas, places like that. Denver, potentially, Pacific Northwest, desperately needs to have a presence on the NASCAR Cup Series schedule. So, yeah, racing at Bowman Gray, it's not going to be good. Like, we've already seen what these cup cars can do on a quarter-mile track at the LA Coliseum. Bowman Gray is a bit different. It's, it's more rounded, in the corners than, than what the uh, Coliseum is. But yeah, I'm not sure it's a thing people are really hoping for or asking for necessarily. It'll be interesting. I mean, for a track that has as much history as Bowman Gray does, whether that be Richard Childress selling peanuts in the grandstands or Chocolate Myers, you know, starting out there, or, you know, I believe the Allisons were, Bobby Allison maybe, was the last guy to win at Bowman Gray Stadium in the Cup Series. There's a lot of NASCAR history there. So having it be there would be cool if it's an exhibition race. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, 250 laps around Bowman Gray is only 63 miles. It's a laughably short distance. In Bristol terms, though, that's about a three-tire set or three-tire run right there. Bristol tires were wearing out after, what, about 20 to 25 miles? So if they can get that to happen at Bowman Gray, they can't. 
uh yeah that's what would happen but yeah potentially bowman gray stadium on the nascar cup series schedule very soon and with talks of them getting rid of richmond uh one of the richmond dates and taking that date to mexico keeping the teams close to home makes a little bit of sense but that mexico race will likely i'm guessing don't know but guessing it would be paired with the uh, early west coast swing portion of the season uh, at the end of the day though mexico city still closer to mooresville and charlotte than los angeles is so you just have to cross the border and uh you know run convoy put cm mccall on cw cw mccall yeah that makes more sense uh on the radio and everybody just blasts through uh some maybe sketchy reactions but let me know in the comments what you think about McDowell leaving and uh, likely ending up at Spire, as well as the Cup Series going to Bowman Gray.